Hello, and a very warm welcome to the Insider Essay, your guide to living better. Join us today as we open up to our unique side with Durban's DJ Chlor, the first woman producer to win Song of the Year with her crossover hit Isibani. Rugby star Ruan Ackerman weds his one and only ballet teacher and model Kirsty O'Connell. Enter the water world of the founder of South Africa's first ever mermaid school, Izal Nair. Artist Michelle Kruger reimagines popular works in children's play blocks for one of a kind masterpieces. Discover which cocktail was on the tip of everyone's tongue at the Vodacom Durban July. Then DJ Tira and his wife Gugu Kati go all out for Africa's biggest day at the races. liberty to party at your leisure feels so unique after all these months and celebrating the first full Durban July in years called for a new spirit. So Tanqueray answered with their sumptuous blackcurrant royale distilled gin, inviting a host of influencers including Spatler Sitole to lead the toast. Tanqueray has given us this amazing experience. We are in this beautiful home getting ready for the July. We've got a whole glam team, faces getting beat, hair is being done as you can see. And yeah, I'm beyond excited. Today, ooh, today is a very big day because we have the Durban July. I'm so excited. For today's look, I have two outfits, which means that my eye look has to ensure that it is kind of neutral, but also on theme to ensure that it works for both dresses because they are completely different colors. Also, I incorporated the purple because you know why? It's a Tanqueray Royale. Today I'm doing a ponytail. I want to show off the dress, so I didn't want like a busy hairstyle. My dress is by Otis Seflo, so I want to show everything, the details and everything. So for my makeup look, the eye look matches the dress. So my dress is a purple dress and it matches the brand. Temba Gwejele composed a menu making the most of Tanqueray Blackcurrant Royale's finest French blackcurrants, vanilla and four classic London Dry Botanicals. So on today's menu, we've got a selection of things, starting off with a cheese board with some cold meats, some crackers, some fresh fruit, just to really give everyone a taste of different flavors and, and palettes, right? And then we move on to that, to making some nice pancakes paired with fresh blueberries, and that should work well with the new varietal, the Royal. And we've got a lovely um, open sandwich made with uh, toasted bread as well as uh, fresh ostrich. Also, we have some nice snacking peppers, baby carrots, just to bring a bit of crunchiness into the mix as well. And for a nice, fresh and crunchy, bite-sized snack, I'm making cucumber and salmon rolls. You basically take your cucumber, cut it off with a vegetable peeler into nice long strips, spread a bit of cream cheese on them, and then put your smoked salmon and roll them into sushi-like rolls. And yeah, enjoy that, it's quite easy. After what feels like two years of getting ready for one party, model and influencer Tino Chiniani was all set. Why I enjoy Tanqueray so much, especially with the floor does feel, I love the citrus notes that are in the drink and I feel like it's such a perfect drink for daytime and nighttime. And I feel like it's complemented very well with any good meal. My favorite Tanqueray is definitely the Royal. As you can see, we are African royalty, but more than anything, the blackcurrant notes are delicious, especially with an ostrich steak. The two pairings go very well together. So today I am going to the Tanqueray Marquis. I can't wait to see what everyone's doing because Tanqueray always has the best dressed guests on all of their events. So I just can't wait to see what everyone is wearing. That is also important. With a Royale cocktail, the ultimate accessory on the day. What better way to see in the calendar event in this sport of kings and queens? Ensuring this party looked as good as that blackcurrant Royale tasted were the head-turning designs of Otsile Sefolo. We're finally at the Derby in July and to say I am excited is an understatement. It looks so beautiful, everyone is dressed to the nines. People are dragging their outfits and I'm one of them. However, I look good. 
So I am dressed by the Otis Fellow and um, once again he has perfected me. He knows my body, he knows what looks good on me and I'm just honored and glad to be draped in his magic. Otis oh, Fellow is a fashion brand that's very diverse, that dresses a whole lot of celebrities and normal people. We specialize in tailoring and more bridal wear. So if you look at the bottle at the top, it's clear between the lid and the actual alcohol when it's still full. So with Pamela's dress, we're inspired by that. Hence, we played with white, which is a color that's royal as well. And uh, it was also inspired by the Tanqueray bottle. So now I'm at the Tanqueray Maquis and I'm dressed by Uti Lesifolo, Uti Sevlo, and I'm matching the new Tanqueray Royale, which is purple in color. As you can see my dress and I'm having a good time. I'm having so much fun here at the Tanqueray Marquis at the German July and enjoying their new drink, the Black Current Royale. You know it's giving exclusives so that we get to taste it before the rest of the country does. Hey. This is a gin inspired by the French heritage and travels of Charles Tanqueray. Evoking the boldness of the man himself is the privilege of brand manager Nontando Kubisa. Tanqueray exists um, to spark a bit of magnificence in your everyday. That's what we are about as a brand. We are constantly pushing our consumers to strive for the next big thing. And making sure that you enjoy the small things and also the big things. We want to celebrate all your wins as a brand. And we want to be there to actually just continuously spark that magnificence in your life. Um, so yeah, we're really excited about our new venture. Um, it's a proposition that we launched this year. And you will see it come to life at various touch points as, as the year progresses. I mean, the last time we had an innovation was two years ago, and we really wanted to remind consumers why we are the premium gin. And in order to do that, we need to innovate the category. So it's very, very important for us to continue to give consumers something new, something fresh. And we believe that Black Country Real is going to be received very well. Consumers are loving the liquid, and we look forward to see um, what it does and, and how consumers enjoy it. This was a party rich with the aroma of the brand's signature botanicals and the spirit of good times. The marquee is absolutely beautiful. The people are gorgeous. We're having a royal affair. And to you at home, I hope you enjoyed our looks. For those born to run, race day had been worth the wait. And the last thing on anyone's mind was an early night. Coming up, how 7 million listeners voted with their ears to help DJ Chlor make musical history. When Chlosiwe Mtalane, aka DJ Chlor, won Song of the Year on a radio station with an audience of over 7 million people, she was the first woman to do it and to pave the way for others. Hi everybody, this is your girl DJ Shlo. I'm, an, I'm a piano DJ and producer, born and bred from Durban, South Africa. I grew up in a small suburb called Seaview and I went to the University of KwaZulu-Natal to do my degree in industrial psychology and management. And after completing my degree and graduating, I went on to pursue music. Right after graduating, uh, while I was a waitress, I took a lessons. I decided, Luti has been okay, I have to drop something and pursue one thing full time. And then I decided to go on to DJing. I was, uh, it was very quick. I, I am a, a very quick learner. So uh, I got to learn the CDJs quite easily. And yeah, and late 2020, I released my first single, which was Ipsu, Ooh, Sonja. Everything just flowed. Being the very first female to win the Song of the Year crossover, it means so, so much. It's history that has been made. There's no, no other female DJ who has won the, the Song of the Year crossover. I've been in the industry for about 
three years now but already i've accomplished such a, a big thing so i'm um, i'm just looking forward in to the future i'm looking forward also to give back because i am on the processes of establishing my own foundation just to teach you know young female djs how to dj at the ins and outs of the industry and how to deal with some certain things that they might come across as females the industry that's so male dominated Part of her own personal growth has been diversifying and investing in another field she has flair for. Situating her beauty salon on the Yusuf Dadu Strip in Durban's CBD is evidence of her business smarts. Fashion and grooming myself and self-care as a whole, it's a, a very important part of my career and myself as a person. I grew up just loving colors. I've been a colorful, colorful person. I love wearing um, something that pops out. So that's even how I describe my, my fashion sense. I love wearing things that stand out, colorful things and yeah. Uh, hence, I also established a hair and beauty salon because it goes hand in hand with image. You know, as a DJ, image is very important. How you present yourself to people and everyone around you, it's very important. I am definitely looking forward to growing as a businesswoman. Uh, I, I like exploring, I like trying out new things. So maybe I can even try out other businesses, other types of businesses. But definitely, I also want to grow the palace here in Beauty Salon. I'd like to, you know, have different, um, I'd like to have franchises in Joburg, in Cape Town, all over the country. I think the sky's the limit, especially for young black females. And the time is now, and I'm really, really looking forward to growing. Loving being witness to their friends' hustle are Zen DJ and MC Tuba Shazi. Uh, I know Nusho for his courtesy now, uh, and yeah, Kumbula, for the first time I met her, Sasham was the escort for the event. Uh, I was going to be her MC on the day. Um, I saw her initially calling him to do it, and then I was going to introduce her to Nusho. And I was going to go to Nusho, and I was going to go to Nusho, and I was going to go to Nusho. And then that's yeah, the friendship hit before singing a stage in Sasham, and I was going to go to Nusho, and they were impressed with Nusho. DJ Shaw's sense of style and grooving herself and her self-image is something she takes really seriously. Even at times where you might think there's no need for much drama, but she's going to bring that drama because of the self-care and the self-image that she has. Happily involved with a four-year-old son, Shaw's private life is one she keeps private. Apart from um, spending time here in my business, I also take some time off and spend time with my friends who are actually with me today. Uh, we love going out, we do simple things. I am a simple girl, so I enjoy the little things in life, you know, going to the beach, having doing walks at the beach, going to the movies, or just cooking at home, you know, catching up. Eating healthily at gigs and on the road is a challenge, so when she's home, she chooses balanced and hearty. My friends play such an, an important role because they keep me grounded. They, they always remind me, when they see me, I'm losing track or I'm going towards the wrong direction. They are the ones who, you know, pull me back and remind me why I started this road and the purpose, you know. So I feel like who I am because I won't lie, there are a lot of um, temptations in this industry that I'm in. So it helps to have those people who who say in rights. Being such a natural communicator and unafraid of failure has led to working with some big names. I've done quite a few collaborations and I think I'm very much humbled to see uh, these people, above these artists that they agreed to, to, to work with me, to make music with me, because most of them, it's people who are, you know, legends in the industry. And then, 
wow, I'm in the industry and I'm making music with them. So it's a very humbling experience. And I do look forward to, you know, releasing more music. And, you know, I love, love also to travel. So going out there and exploring and doing collaborations while traveling, it would be a nice experience. DJ Claw's tasty new track, Mpilo Umnandi, or Soft Life, features Cheese Beezy, a vocalist she discovered. Unique is as unique does. Right after this, their first FaceTime is enough to tell model Kirsty O'Connell that rugby's Ruan Ackerman is the one. for their Winelands wedding, rugby star Ruan Ackerman and ballet teacher and model Kirsty O'Connell have every reason to believe that they're uniquely destined to be together. The groom's brother, Tian Ackerman, tends to agree. Hey guys, I'm Ruan Ackerman, a professional rugby player at last day in England, and I can finally say that I'm back in South Africa visiting the family. Yeah, it's always good to have the big brother back in the country. I haven't seen him in two years, so it's always good to have him back. It's really good to be back home. It's really good to, to see all the faces again. COVID obviously was a difficult time for everyone, but um, I'm really excited being back. And I'm here back for my wedding as well. It's not just visiting the family. I'm here getting married as well in, in Cape Town, so I'm pretty excited. My dad played for the spin box and stuff, so it was always in the family. I grew up with a a rugby ball in my hand. From, I think, the first time I can get on a rugby field, I just, I love the game. Made my first contract, a junior contract at the Lions in Johannesburg. Played there from 2014 till 2017, and then uh, decided to make the move to England, where I've been now for the last five years. And um, yeah, just rugby just was always something that I loved. It's something that South African people love. It's something that's, that's been in the country for always. So. I'm just really humble and blessed to, to be able to play this, this amazing sport. Something actually that I'll tell you guys is the story how him and Kirsty met. Um, he was like showing me this girl on Instagram and I was like, who's this? And then he showed me now, yes, he wants to marry this girl. And I was like, Ron, how would you marry her? You're in the UK and she's in South Africa. And then I came back for holiday in South Africa and we went to a party, me and my friends, and then, yes, Kirsty walking in, and I was like, no way, this is the girl my brother's got a crush on. And I called him, I went to the bathroom, and I called him, and I said, listen, I'm gonna tell you something. And he's like, what? He's like, no, Kirsty just walked into the place. He's like, no, and he couldn't believe it. And then he just said to me, can I get a number for her? And he's, they started chatting on WhatsApp, and then at the point he was still injured, so he, she distracted him a bit of his injury that I think was a good thing for him and his mental health. But So yeah, that's the story I would have actually met if it wasn't for me. Uh, I didn't think he was going to expose me like that, but um, yeah, just take all the credit then for yourself. But I am, I could say, I guess, play for the two of the and I guess, play is South Africa and to all my house party that can play with. Yes, like a best of the van of your life. Once Ruan proposed almost two years ago, Kirsty only had eyes for silk. My dress is from Australia, then flown to London and then flown all the way back home with me. And I just wanted a dress that I felt like myself in and felt like it was just me, but in a white dress. So I've kept my dress very simple with a few beautiful details. So the fabric was the most important part for me of the dress. So I've gone with a beautiful silk called honey silk. And then we've added a few details of eyelash trim all around the bust area and the back. And then it's got this beautiful crisscross detailing as well. And then it's got a really long train just for a little bit of drama. With my dress, I've got this beautiful pearl veil. And because my dress is so simple, I wanted to bring some detailing in. So it's got all these beautiful pearls and it's a really long train to match with the dress. And then just to bring in a little bit of bling, I've gone with these beautiful heels with pearls to tie in with the veil and then a little bit of bling in between as well. For Ruan to shine next to his illustrious father and Springbok Johan Ackerman has been quite a feat. At 26, he's now the captain of Premiership Club Gloucester. 
Yeah, yeah I'm very proud of him. It's so special for me to be part of his rugby career, seeing him growing into a young schoolboy, into a professional rugby player, as a coach and as a father. You know, obviously, Ruan had to work hard because at school, people will say he plays first team because I'm his dad. Then he, after that, he came to the Lions. And when I wanted to pick him for super rugby, people, I, I always knew people will say, oh, is it because of me? And then we went over to Gloucester and people will say, oh, he's following me. Then he knows he's going to select it. That's what's so pleasing for me is the fact that since I left Gloucester, he's been numerous times player, player of the match. He's just been appointed for this season that finished a few weeks ago as the player's player of the year and the fans player of the year. And he done it in the two years that I left all on his own. So yeah, so that makes me very proud that he's grown into the, the player his own stature and, and his own name, you know. To Ruan's sister and third year student, Zilka Ackerman, the couple go together like Saturday and rugby. Oh, I'm so proud of them. Um, and they're really like, they suit each other so well. They fill each other up. Her, her weaknesses, he fills up and his weaknesses, she strengthens in. There's no more perfect couple than them. You want to always think about your children and you want to see them happy and, and, and you know, see them living the life that you are hoping for. And I think we all can't wait, um, you know, for them to, to get uh, married. And um, that's why we're so excited for them, you know. And like any parents, you know, it's great to see your, your children growing up being successful and also now the next journey is getting that life partner and, and starting that family for, of them. Oh. Kirsty felt destiny calling very early on. I knew I wanted to marry Ruan. After our first FaceTime alone, I walked out of my bedroom and I said to my mom, I've got a massive issue. And she laughed at me. She was like, what is wrong? Did he say something wrong? And I was like, I'm going to marry him. I don't know. I just know I'm going to marry him. And I had a little panic attack because after one face, I'm convinced I'm marrying someone. Yeah, exactly. And I was right. Knowing his bride's dress would be a timeless design, the groom decided on classic cuts for himself and the manor. Not even two weeks before the actual wedding, I got back in South Africa. The same day that I landed, the guys brought me here and um, we did measurements. I came on last week Friday and the amount of space we had and how, how nicely it's sitting. It's just, everything just came together and you can also see he did a bit of extra stuff for me as well, putting some memories in there. No, I'm really happy. Because he wasn't here, I was liaising with, obviously, his brother Tian, and he was very specific about um, making sure that he was wearing a classic black suit, and um, there was detail that he wanted his brother to stand out differently. So we added a satin lapel on his blazer, and then, importantly, they wanted to plan something beautiful for the groom. So they made sure that the lining of the blazer had photos and memories and messages from everyone. They continued it also throughout the back of his waistcoat. Ruan himself is very meticulous about where he wanted everything, like which messages he wanted, like this message he really wanted by his heart side and things like that. So, yeah, I think everything's worked out in the end. It's, it's not even a week ago that I arrived and I'm standing here in a full suit and, and ready for the wedding. So I just want to thank these guys for, for everything and their patience as well. Amazing. The groomsmen included the great matchmaker Tian, best friend Reynard Skuman and former teammate Jako Kriel. I believe everybody lo lo looks amazing. The amount of work that went into this, these suits, yeah. the, the amount of effort that went in is extraordinary and uh, you can see it in the results. The one thing people probably know about him but don't know, he's very keen on his fashion and how he looks. Yeah, that uh, obviously comes out, comes out in the way he dresses. I'm always excited for a big day. <laughs> <laughs> it's their special day, but I'm going to make it fun for them. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with Jakob now. It's going to be a massive day to help them and celebrate their marriage. And we're all excited. We can't wait. Ruan has proven his big match temperament before crowds tens of thousands strong. If he could only hold his nerve in front of 50 guests. And so he did. They're a couple who don't sweat the small stuff. And so it was with the reception. 
When I put my dress on, it felt absolutely unreal. You know, having it hanging in the cupboard for so many months in its bag, but finally actually putting it on was just absolutely magical. And every second I spent in the dress was just incredible. Seeing Kirsty for the first time in a dress was something I imagined for ages. She kept it in that little room upstairs where we live in England. She just kept it there the whole time and I just heard rumors about it. And then when I saw it yesterday for the first time, I just got like, blown away. So she was really beautiful. Thank you. Seeing Iran in the chapel was very emotional because uh, he kept saying to me he wasn't going to cry and he sobbed like a baby. Yeah. So seeing him was just so emotional for me, seeing his reaction, just I was struggling to keep it together. Kirsty describes Ruan's unique quality as human sunshine, and now she can wake up to it each day. My feeling this morning waking up was just, she was awake before me, so I turned to my left and she's on the phone, so excited to like, just be, I don't know what she was doing, which was just, <laughs> I just see the like excitement on her face and that's when I realized I'm even more excited than I thought. So it's just a feeling that I think I always wanted. And in this beautiful place that we are, so it was just like, what more can you ask for, basically? A national call-up for England or South Africa is considered inevitable. But until then? Our future plans now after the wedding is basically... Just to enjoy being married. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> enjoy a married life. Exactly. Take it in, yeah. soak it in and uh, go to England and as a married couple for the first time, I'm excited. Yes. Mrs. Ackerman. <laughs> the confidence of knowing that this is who and what you were made for must be the best feeling in the world. Right after this, Michelle Kruger makes art for the child in you and welcome to SA's first ever mermaid school. Michelle Kruger's childhood imagination was lit by her grandmother's vast knowledge of the world, her appetite for drawing and storytelling. She inherited that appetite and today expresses it in a uniquely creative way. Hello Insider SA, my name is Michelle Kruger, I'm a Lego artist and welcome to my space. I grew up in a small town in the Free State, it's called Grunstadt. I'm the youngest of five kids. There was this box of Lego that came to my sister and then eventually when I got the small box, it was all chewed up, but I loved playing with it. I would always build little figurines. And I think that the fact that I didn't have a lot as a kid growing up, that kind of inspired the indulgence where I'm at now with enjoying a lot of Lego. <laughs> When Michelle's partner, Lelani Dupreer, gifted her this Mustang to rebuild, it set off creative fireworks. I can actually show it to you. It's this one, yeah? And from there, the obsession started. What if I tried to build a portrait? Because I'm a painter and I love painting portraits, just doing it as a joke. So I got a picture of David Bowie and I just started building a small little David Bowie portrait and jokingly sent her a picture and my partner Lelani, she said, this is amazing, you should monetize this. <laughs> so after the David Bowie, I made a bigger version of a Vincent van Gogh and I posted on Instagram and it sold within two weeks and then it was on fire. Diagnosed with multiple sclerosis last year, instead of falling to pieces, Michelle remarkably built a hit art career, one block at a time. Inspiration for previous works I've done, I use existing artworks that are commercial. So I've done Vincent van Gogh, I've done Frida Kahlo's. So I'll do a remake of an existing artwork, but in Lego. The process of getting the design, the idea into an actual artwork is I will get pictures online and convert them into a usable image. I convert the image into like a mosaic or something pixelated, which translates and converts into the amount of pixels, into the amount of studs in my design. The next step would be to procure the bricks that I would need. If I don't already have them, I would need to source. So I would buy the classic brick sets, 
It looks like this, where I'll find some of the primary colors and maybe a few secondaries. When I start from the blueprint, I would start with a base plate. Normally, I would use just a rectangular or a square base plate. With this one, I've tried something different and I've done a cutout of the base plate. And this would then be framed. And I like building it up to create some texture. And especially with the photographs that we do for the prints, the texture creates nice shadows on the piece. So when it's hung on a wall, it actually looks like the real thing. From taking a pay cut during lockdown, the extraordinary Miss Kruger is now an artist of independent means. A local artist that I really look up to is one of my old lecturers and we've actually done an exhibition together as well in Cape Town. His name is Johan Alberts and he taught me a lot about colour and composition of works and just drawing and painting in general. So I really look up to him as a very good artist and an exceptional lecturer. I'm also very inspired by travelling. I've been to Japan twice. A lot of my art is inspired by Japanese art and the way they use colour. Even my signature on my artwork is a stamp in Japanese, which in English translates to simplistic, content and beautiful. These portraits in toy bricks or cardboard reflect the artist's view on where her art's real value lies. I think what draws people into my work is two things. Firstly, it would be the nostalgia. So either people had Legos as a kid and they still feel that pleasure from seeing Legos. Also, I think the magic of Walking back from the piece, if you see it up close, you can't really see it, but walking back, there's a bit of a magic that happens the moment you see, ah, oh, that is what it is. It's a Vincent van Gogh or it's a Frida Kahlo. What makes my art unique is the fact that I'm one of a few people in South Africa and probably in the world who does Lego art, specifically like a 2D version of portraits. I think for me, I don't necessarily want to provide any sort of strict commentary on something. I'd rather create pieces that make people think what it means to them personally. It's more of a, a feeling, sometimes a feeling of nostalgia, just the feeling of life is not that complicated. It can be as simple as childhood toys. Each Michelle Kruger original shows that art can be simple, enjoyable and to the point. If it takes you to a deeper place, that's an added reward. From the age of five, when this Little Mermaid's family moved to a house with a pool, she was more in the water than out. Today, with help from a friend, she runs South Africa's first ever Mer School. Hi, Insider SA. I'm Rizal Nair. And I'm Nadia Walker. We're, We're the, the mermaids, mermaids at Mer School. Ever since I can remember, I love the water. I grew up in Namibia next to the river on a farm. I watched a show about obstacle courses and one of the contestants was a mer coach. And I Googled it and I realized, oh my gosh, you can be a mermaid as a career. And then in 2020, we had the opportunity to take over the swim school. And I thought, this is a great time to bring mermaiding to South Africa. I then contacted Nadia. She is a swim teacher for over 20 years. She has a background in artistic swimming. And I said, let's put our brains together and come up with a syllabus and come up with this movement water practice where you wear this beautiful tail. And it just kicked off from there. It's quite exciting working with Izel. She comes up with these amazing ideas and then she throws it out there and somehow they just manage to happen. She attracts what she wants and needs. It's like the mermaid, she wants it and it happens. <laughs> the first time I put on a towel, it was nothing like this glamorous, but it was the most amazing experience. They soon saw how many harbour mermaid dreams, and now they even boast a merman champion in Alessandro Aliquo. What I enjoy the most about the sport is it's very challenging. It takes a lot of fitness. I've been doing it for about two years now. What I enjoy most about mermaiding is uh, definitely the exercise part of it, but also the social part of it. Izal and Nadia are very attentive. They make sure that you do the techniques correctly. They make sure that uh, you actually get to breathe, keep your breath a little bit longer under the water, because that's very necessary, especially when you're doing back rolls and front rolls and all of the tricks and stuff that they're teaching for 10 years, Izel has run a yoga studio and she finds that it shares many parallels with what she does in the water. 
We're preparing for the mermaiding competition in October. There are 10 moves that we have to master and we put those 10 moves together in a sequence uh, to music and then you're performing and you're interacting with the crowd. So the 10 moves need to be perfected. So some of the shapes show up in the mermaiding that we do in yoga. There's a lot of the back bend shapes, some of the handstands. There's also the element of being calm. We want to look graceful underwater as mermaids. We want to swim slowly. So for that, we need that calm state of mind, same as what we have in yoga. The ocean still to be crossed here is broadening the public's mind about mermaiding. It's challenging making this a recognizable sport. Uh, people have prejudices and preconceived ideas about mermaiding and wearing a mermaid tail. Some people think it's just for play or that it's a costume, it's just for women or little girls. So breaking through that and showing people, you know, it is a whole body practice workout. Internationally, it's well known, it's very popular. So in South Africa, we still have a lot of growing of the sport to do. The idea is that there would be provincial competitions and then those winners will take part in the nationals and then that winner will be going overseas to international or world championships in China. Competing against your own limits is the key in the free diving part of the sport, practiced by Heidi Leach. So free diving in, in mermaiding is all dependent on what kind of mermaid you choose to be, whether it be a fabric tail, which is often a beginner, and as you advance, a silicon tail is probably the most free diving safety issues that you need to apply. So with a silicon tail, they can range from 12 to 21 kgs. I was first introduced to a silicon tail in Singapore. I was fortunate enough to try on a tail. I couldn't get over it and I decided I had to be able to bring that to South Africa. And it took me a year to develop. I did many sort of prototypes that didn't work until I finally got to something that, that did work and now I'm able to produce. I am so excited to go for a new tail fitting. Every time I get a new tail, I match my hair to, to my tail, and I just can't wait to see what the new tail is going to look like. Of the fabric and silicone tail types, designer Zelda Velchemut is the creative and practical mind behind the fabric variety, each unique to its owner. The process of creating the tails are quite intricate because first I need to design them and for that I look for inspiration, be it in nature, be it with flowers or butterflies or whatever to design the flu and also what the scales would look like. I draw it in then and then I basically convert that into Photoshop into a graphic design. From there I take the measurement of the person who wants to order the tail and then I need to make it life size. I send that to the printers uh, which then print it on fabric. After that it comes back and then I pass it on to Villamin, who then puts it together for us and sews it together. Seamstress Ramaisela Villamina Apane is like the fairy godmother of mermaiding. The things that I enjoy the most sewing the tail is when the people wearing the tail and swimming, they're getting very excited. And I see that they're very happy. If there's an Atlantis Fashion Week, and who's to say there isn't? This would be the showstopper. The inspiration behind this tale is the sunset. I absolutely love the sunset colors. Yellow is my favorite, so we've worked in quite a bit of yellow. And then it also matches my hair. There's these beautiful purples and pinks and peachy colors. The new fabric feels very different to my old fabric tail. The fabric is a lot lighter, so it won't be as heavy and it will be easier to lift the tail out of the water. We've also put in a little bit of neoprene in the extra fins on the sides. And neoprene makes it buoyant, so it will float in the water. It's not gonna clamp up. It's gonna look more realistic and real. To hear that Izel also plays the harmonium is to believe she must be a real mermaid. Thank you for joining us on this mermaid journey. Join, Join us in, in the pool. pool. Yes, our country needs teachers, nurses, electrical engineers, and you can be any of those while being a mermaid too. 
Still to come, our man DJ Tira lands just as winter's biggest party says hold my cocktail, they're playing my song. Sponsored by Capitech. Simplify banking. Live better. What we all imagine as the unique daily life of DJ Tira is one which any of us get to live for a day, one weekend a year, when KwaZulu Natal's biggest party comes to town. Local hero Tira is synonymous with the famous horse race because he usually sets the tempo. Hey, inside I say, it's a beautiful day. Welcome to my house. Hey yo guys, what up? It's one and only DJ Tira Batima Koya Bering Batima Lumia Lumana. Today is a very, very, very big day. It's a Durban July day and I'm going to be starting the show. I need to make sure that I look really, really good. So let's go and check it out. So this is my outfit. Hey yo, the two people worked on my outfit. We've got my stylist, Kukukati, my wife, and House of Ole. And I think House of Ole did a great job with this outfit. I'm in love with it already. I really, really love it. The fabric, it's silk. So it's already saying money, money, money. It's saying Devon July. It's saying you are hosting one of the hottest marquees at the Devon July. My wife loves fashion. She always comes up with great ideas on how I must look. She's a stylist, come on. So I guess that's why she can be able to make me look so good. But now it's time for me to do final touch-ups on my suit. So I will see you guys later at the Devon July. I love you. The man gets there by air because not only is half of Durban en route to the races, but thousands from across Southern Africa and beyond. That's the DJ's official explanation. Unofficially, it's just the coolest way to arrive and signals that the beats are about to drop. As the Makoya berries, I have to arrive at the Devon July style. And I always arrive with the helicopter. And uh, I flew with my two winners who won the competition on radio. And you know what? You never know. Maybe next time it will be you. What Elvis is to Vegas, Tira is to Gravel. If you're not in Devon this weekend, that means you don't know Devon because this day really describes what Devon is all about. We've got a beautiful weather. I'm hosting the Afrotainment Marquee. We're hosting it for the 10th time. And we're welcoming our guests. And yeah, I can't wait to see how everybody's going to be looking later. The host with the most would be holding court at the Capitech Lounge, where event coordinator Sujay Hari had set the smoothest scene. For the Capitec Lounge, I wanted my guests to feel nice and comfortable and almost at home. So I brought in a lot of carpets, lots of flowers, and a lot of cushions. Uh, with the carpets, I'm matching Capitec colors, bringing out the reds, bringing out the blues, bringing out the whites. For the flowers, I've used white roses, and I've used leaves which I've dyed blue to bring out the colors as well. I'm hoping my, my guests will come here, have a chill spot away from all the craziness that's happening today, as well as just a nice space to socialize with their friends. Meeting South Africa where she lives, works and plays is the privilege of Capitex Skonziwe Tanibe. Since we are at the Durban July, we are here to actually be in the same moment with our clients because we'd like to see how they move, the spaces that they actually spend their time in, so we are here to see what our clients are doing. My favorite benefit of banking with Capitec is simplicity. So they've made their banking very simple for the clients, and I like the newly launched Live Better savings account, presented onto your Live Better savings account. And what I like the most is how simple it is to use the app. As of today, I'm going to be increasing my limit. The Capitec payment method that I've been using at the July, it's of course, scan to pay. I mean, come on, you look at my suit. I can't be getting cash, guys. I can just use my phone, scan to pay, and buy drinks, and even buy drinks for my friends. So scan to pay method really works for me. I don't have to carry cash. I can just pay with the phone, scan to pay. Mwah. I love Capitec. 
a guest at the Capitec Lounge, Sumizi summed up what it means to live better in 2022. It's about simply rediscovering the simple freedom to be with people. What makes the 7th July very special is that it has been absent for the past two years. And in that two years, people have gone through so much. And it's been dark, it's been gloom, it's been hopeless, it's been sad. And this is like a coming out celebration of just life. So it's very important that we appreciate each and every moment and, and be grateful for life. I just like the music, I like the fashion, I like the food, and just sitting with people. I love everything. Everything, everything's great. Yeah. We enjoy looking at people, seeing them very happy. Seven July is a most amazing thing because it just gathered people together. And that is what makes us happy. No passport or visa required. Just the one way that Mandy Martell sees for anyone to live better. My favorite digital payment application has to be scan to pay because it's so effortless and it's very convenient for someone like me who doesn't like going around carrying wallets and having saggy pockets. So for example, here yeah, I just scanned my phone and here I am, Bob's your uncle. What a pleasure to move, breathe, pose, dance, party and live free just for the glorious, unique pleasure of it. Tell us how you plan to make the most of your freedom to live better and stand a chance to win a thousand rand. Simply reply to the competition post on the Insider Essays social media platforms using hashtag Capitech Live Better. T's and C's apply and can be found on the Insider Essay website. Get more of the Insider Essay online. Follow, connect, engage, and be inspired to live better with the Insider Essay. Watch the show Monday evenings at 6, repeat Saturday at 1 on S3.